Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look over this uh, module from batteryhookup.com. It's a 24 volt, uh, they call it the Super Beast. It's made up of 48 headway cells. Those are the lithium iron phosphate cells that uh, have very similar characteristics to lead acid on the voltages. So they're really good for 12 volt, in this, in this case 24 volt systems. Um, we're going to look it over, see how the module is um, used kind of in this case. And we're also going to just go ahead and tear it down. We're going to uh, start out by splitting it into 12 volts. Um, and then we're also going to just keep going and then tear down the cells. So in case you just want to harvest them for another project. So uh, let's take a look at the casing. We've got this little plastic cover here. Uh, for some reason, they didn't include the fuse that would go here. Not a big deal since we're going to tear this down. But if you wanted to use this as is, you would definitely want that fuse. Um, this case uh, also has right here the um, contactor. Um, we've got a couple bars up here and we'll go over those as we tear it down. There's a fan and on my first observations there are, <clears throat> are no circuits whatever in here. Um, no BMS um, but there are lead wires and stuff that come out to that cable. Everything is done externally which is kind of good. We don't have to worry about certain things and we can actually leverage that wire if you want. Um, so let's do the first thing. We're going to take off the plastic cover. We're also going to take off all these panels and see how everything is laid out and then we'll go from there. All right, now that we've got the uh, case off, let's take a little deeper look. Right there is the array. Right here is the negative terminal, and the positive comes out here. So the fuse would be from here to here. I believe this is a hall sensor that measures the current and sends the wire uh, information down these wires, which comes out the you know, the big bundle there. And then it goes to the contactor. Now it looks like they have two scenarios set up here. So one, this plate is on this side, which means it should have power all the time. This one is on the, on the other side of the contactor, which means this is dead unless activated. And the way you activate it is you should be able to send 12 volts down this wire um, and that will um, turn it on. And the reason this is used is that if you use any kind of uh, regular switch, uh, like a paddle switch or whatnot, that will just burn it up because this is a lot of amperage. There'll be sparks. It'll probably weld itself together. So that's what these are designed for. So as a case, man, this could be really useful for some uh, particular applications. I will be honest, <clears throat> it's not the best on um, watt hours per um, square inch or however that measurement is done. Um, these cells are only eight amp hours each. Um, they're not efficient on space, but they're not designed to be. They're designed to be high current. This system is um, a 8S6P. Uh, so that means eight cell groups and then six in parallel on each cell group. This is a lot of power, guys. You've got to be careful. Um, if you make any shorts, it's going to, not, I don't know, blow up, but it's going to melt some stuff. So be very, very careful. On the sides here, which is where we're going to spend a lot of our time, 
Um, they put a real rubber mat here, which is good on both sides. Um, we're going to look on this side first, which is the ground side. Let's take a look in here. All right, so you see that top section there? Those are where our negative and positives end up. And then we have a bridged section down here. So let me explain for a second. This is, if you're gonna think of the cells in a, in a series, this would be the zero position, the ground. And so it goes from the ground, zero, to this cell group here, which would be one, cell group two, cell group three, cell group four, bridged over to cell group five, six, seven, eight, ending here. All right, so we have 8S there. But here's the thing, if you wanna use 12 volts, you do not have to tear this apart. You can use it um, completely encased and not have to break this bridge. We're gonna break it later, but you don't have to. If you run a power lead off of the top of here, and then you attach a lead down here, that gives you a 4S configuration. There's 12 volts. Then you can do the exact same thing on this side. Now you'll need to put a ground lead on this side, and then this will be a positive. That's another 4S. So if you were to put a wire off of here, and a wire off of here, and then go run 12 volts for, you know, whatever amount of time, you'll deplete this side of the battery. And this side will stay the same, okay? So you don't have to. Now you might want to for lots of reasons, and we're gonna get in, we're gonna split it just so you can see. But you could even do a BMS, run the leads that are already built in, um, and use them. You could do a BMS for 4S on this side, you could do a BMS for 4S on this side, and still not have to break anything. Um, but we're going to. We're going to take this plate off, cut it down the middle, and we'll show you that they're two separate sections. So if you want to run something um, that's 12, or 12 volt, um, you can. And the biggest reason I would think that you might want to split it up is if then you want to run it in parallel. So then you could run at 12 volts at 100 amp hours instead of, or 96 amp hours instead of the 48 you, you get with just the way it is. So let's, um, let's do that now. Let's uh, go ahead and take off this plate and we'll mark where we can, get our Dremel out and cut it in half. All right, we got the plate off of there. It came off extremely easy. There was no issues whatsoever. As you can see on this bank of six, we have a different type of uh, head on here than this side that shows the negative and positive. And so to split this in half, we're just gonna draw a line from here to here, give it a, some margin and then insulate it with some tape. Make sure we don't accidentally short anything um, or connect the bridge back when we don't want it to. So let's do that now. We're gonna draw a line and then Dremel it to separate it. We've got it separated in half. What I'm going to do is take my marker and give me a little margin to separate um, the distance between to the plates uh, so there's no chance of accidentally bridge. Um, I have the belt sander in my workshop. I'm just gonna go do that real quick and then we'll mount it back up and see what we got.
All right, as you can see, we now have that break done. We've cut those two plates apart and uh, insulated a bit with some uh, electrical tape. And so now let's take a look and see if our work paid off. So we'll take our probe here. Uh, hold on a second, let me change this camera angle. All right, so now that we've broken that bridge, if we measure ground positive, we got nothing. But if we go down here, we've got our 12 volts. If we go down to here, we've got our 12 volts. All right, one other note, if you do wanna use the BMS lead wires, this side has that bridge. So this side, you could get to every one of the wires via that plug. And the diagram is on batteryhookup.com's website of the pinouts. But on this side, uh, every cell group except this one will have a lead on it. So if you want to run a BMS on this side, you will at least need to run one wire from this plate to your BMS. Well, we're going to call it a video for there. I'll probably do a more detailed video. I might even find a way to bridge this back and try to use this module as is. Um, but I hope you found this interesting. If you want to get this battery or others from batteryhookup.com, be sure to use my tech code, uh, discount code. It's T-E-C-H, and that'll help the channel out and get you a discount. So I uh, hope to see you next time, guys.